Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. I want to speak something about His Holiness Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. I don't know a lot. I'm not an intimate associate of His. Our paths very rarely crossed. So I can only speak what I've heard and what I've uh, learned from other devotees. One of the things which I thought was very nice about Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj was that he was encouraging the devotees to establish a good economic basis for our movement. He wanted to establish different businesses and industries and if devotees had some skills or crafts then he liked them to use it so that they could generate some income and help to support themselves and also help to support the movement, which is very important. Our movement, you know, I joined the movement in 1971 and I remember so many years struggling to maintain the, the temples and collecting money whatever way we could on the streets, begging almost. So it's not very pleasant. Nowadays, of course, our movement is more congregationally based. But Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj wanted to make sure that the movement didn't have any difficulties in the future. So he tried his best to establish and to encourage devotees to set up some businesses and to make some uh, industry in this way to help to support the movement. And also, very important, provide some uh, opportunities for devotees to earn an income for themselves. Because especially devotees in the household or ashram, they have families to maintain, they need money to support themselves. And it's not very easy. And they don't like to work with people who are not devotees. And so it's very nice if we can have a nice, uh, if we can have our own businesses and devotees can work together. So Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj tried to do this. We see other traditions, other religions like Swami Narayans, they do this. Many of them are in the diamond business. And then also you've got the Jains. I know a lot of Jains, they're also in the diamond business. And I said, one way, not a very pleasant way of making money, working with precious stones, but still, they did generate a lot of income. However, Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj, had, he, he was a visionary. He was thinking about the future and he was trying to plan for the benefit of devotees. Another thing which was also very nice about him was that he tried to bring people back into Krishna consciousness and to connect them closely, people, especially people who'd been in the movement and who'd somehow become a bit separated from them. For example, there was uh, Hansa Dura, Hansa Dura Prabhu, who, he left the body recently, but uh, Hansa Dura Prabhu had been, he'd been a sannyasi, and he'd been a guru, and he had disciples, and he, you know, he, he, he'd done quite a lot. He, he, in the early years, he was really a pioneer. He worked very hard in Germany and Europe and like that. Later on, he came to America, and somehow he got into d difficulties there. So he had to give up being a, a guru and being a GBC and everything. But Bhakti Charu Swami had a nice relationship with him and he encouraged him and he, he even wanted the GBC to bring him back, to reinstate him, let him come back and be in the movement. So it's very nice that, you know, he was encouraging people. And an another thing he did was he met with Madhu Pandit Prabhu, who leads the Ritvik group, of course, in Bangalore. And of course there, 
really successful, you know, he's really huge. He's famous all over the world probably for his Akshaya Patra program. So Bhakti Charuswami had a meeting with Gopal Krishna Maharaj and Madhu Pandit. They met together and they tried to encourage Madhu Pandit, you know, come back, be with this gone, you know. Of course, it, maybe there's a long way to go before that actually happens. But this is all part of Bhakti Charuswami's vision, you know, to try to keep people in ISKCON and bring people back to ISKCON who've gone away. He had that concern for the welfare of people. Uh, Bhakti Charuswami has, of course, he had all the Vaishnava qualities. He was, he was he, and initially he was a cook. He was cooking, he cooked for Prabhupada, and he, he liked to cook for devotees. He was wonderful in kirtan, he had such a mo melodious voice. We, when we hear him chant Jagannath Astikam or Radha Astikam, so wonderful. His pronunciation, so perfect and so melodious, everyone attracted to hear him sing and chant.